And here's another interesting example of how to solve a projectile motion problem in two dimensions. Uh, landing on a slope, and here's a skier coming down a steep cliff, small horizontal part, reaching a speed of 20 meters per second, which is quite fast, and then getting to a cliff, kind of, well, not quite a cliff, but kind of a slope of 45 degrees, and of course, the motion will be like a projectile motion. The skier will land somewhere on that slope further down. The question is, how far down the slope will the skier land? And since the uh, initial velocity is in a horizontal direction, there's no, vertical, uh, horizontal, there's no vertical initial velocity, and there's also no velocity at an angle, we don't have to find the components, which means we can go right into finding time in the air. So time in the air is equal to question mark, and so we use the equation y is equal to y initial plus v initial in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. By now, if you've seen several of the videos, you can see we use the same equation over and over and over again to find time in the air. Initial uh, height, well, consider that to be y equals zero height, so the initial height would be zero. So we have y is equal to zero plus v initial in the y direction would be zero minus 4.9 t squared, and so we can then say that um, uh, if we rearrange the equation, we have uh, 4.9 t squared is equal to minus y, or t squared is equal to minus y divided by 4.9. Now, we have a slight problem here, is that I cannot find the time because I don't know the y. I don't know how far down uh, the person will, will land on the slope. What is the y distance here? So here we have the y distance and the x distance covered. And so when that happens, you may want to try to find time in the air using the x equation as well, or the equation in the horizontal direction. So time in the air using the x direction. So we have x is equal to v initial in the x direction times time. Of course, the v initial in the x direction is known. So x is not known, so we have x is equal to 20t. So now realize we have one equation and we have a second equation where time is related to either x or y. Now since the slope is a 45 degree angled slope, we know that x and y must be the same no matter where on the slope he lands. So we can say that x must equal y, and therefore we can say, well, in that respect, we can set these two equations equal to each other. So we can come over here and we can say, all right, that means that since y is equal to minus 4.9t squared and x is equal to 20t, I can set those two equal to each other. So I can write that 20t is equal to minus 4.9t squared. Notice I can divide both sides by t. I get 20 is equal to minus 4.9t or t is equal to 20 divided by a minus 4.9. I say, well, wait a minute. Now we have a negative time. Well, not really. The reason why we end up in a negative is because we had a negative g here, right? So if we're looking for time, we can take the absolute value of g. Also realize that y is a negative quantity because y is below the zero point right here. So therefore, if I assume this to be a positive y, I mean a negative y, the negative will go away. The negative y will go away here. And we can simply say, so I'll just put this in parentheses, that time is equal to 20 divided by 4.9. And with a calculator, we can find out what this is equal to. So 20 divided by 4.9, and we get 4.08 seconds. All right. Now that we know that, we can go ahead and find either x or y. x would be easier because we have a steady velocity in the x direction. So then go ahead, plug in that in here. We can say that x is equal to 20 times 4.08. And so times 20, we get 81.6 meters. Okay, that tells us the distance in the x direction. That also tells us the distance in the y direction because x equals y, but that doesn't tell us d yet. But again, using Pythagorean theorem, we can say that d is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So d is equal to the square root of 81.6 squared plus 81.6 squared because x and y are equal to each other. So let's square that, double that, take the square root, 
And finally, we can say that D is equal to 115 meters, which is a little bit more than the length of a football field, which means this skier comes, gets airborne and will land over 100 meters further down the slope. Of course, 20 meters per second is quite fast on skis. Again, let's go ahead and review what we just did. A skier comes down, reaches a speed of 20 meters per second, comes to an incline of 45 degrees, downward, slope downward, so it's going to go airborne and hit the slope somewhere further down. We start with the concept that we're going to find time in the air, but right away we find ourselves in trouble because we don't know what y is. So then we use the same concept in the x direction as well. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. Uh, we then realize that x and y must be equal, so we can set the two equations equal to each other. Then we solve for time, then we plug it in to the um, Pythagorean theorem to find the distance, and that's how you solve this problem.